There are a number of companies currently working on autonomous vehicles, but Mobileye, which is owned by Intel, is one of the most underestimated players in the game, and in my opinion, is Tesla's greatest competition. So let's take a look at Mobileye's progress and also their approach to developing full autonomous vehicles and compare this to Tesla's approach and Tesla's progress. Then we'll answer the question, who is likely to actually complete a true driverless system first? I'm Jonathan and welcome to CleanerWise. First of all, in this conversation, I think it's important that we start out with the problem. The problem is it's very, very difficult to develop a full self-driving vehicle and the room for error is little to none. Humans make a lot of mistakes while driving and there are a number of these mistakes that turn into accidents each year. But as a society, we accept a certain failure rate from humans and accept this as normal. But when it comes to a full self-driving vehicle and full self-driving technology, people are not so forgiving. There is not as much room for error. The question really comes down to though, what is an acceptable failure rate for an autonomous vehicle and how much safer than a human does it have to be? Tesla is proving that they can develop a system that is much safer than a human driver. In fact, their autopilot system, while it's not yet a full self-driving system, but technically a level two system, is approaching somewhere about 10 times the safety of a human driver. According to Tesla's Q1 2021 safety report, with autopilot engaged, the Tesla vehicles only had one accident for every 4.19 million miles driven. This is compared to the NHTSA average of one accident for every 484,000 miles. So if Tesla is able to release a full self-driving system that is 10 times safer than a human driver, is that good enough? Let's take a look at the number of accidents that would happen each year at different failure rates and different improvements and illustrate why I believe it has to improve by quite a large number. According to the US Department of Energy, in 2019, Americans drove around 3.23 trillion miles. With the NHTSA's current rate of one accident for every 484,000 miles, that means there were probably around 6.67 million accidents in 2019. If a full self-driving system was able to improve this 10 times, that would equate out to around 667,000 accidents per year. If you were able to ship a system that is 1,000 times safer than a human driver, this number could go down to 6.67 thousand accidents per year. So obviously any improvement is good and will save lives. But the question that regulators have to answer is, what is an acceptable failure rate? So I don't really have that answer. I don't really know what that answer is, but I just thought it's important that we talk about how difficult this is and really that there is really very, very little room for error. What rate will regulators think is acceptable before they allow a true driverless system? Now that we've laid that out, the problem is difficult. Let's talk about the approach of Mobileye to solving this problem and compare that to Tesla's approach. Anytime you bring up the topic of full self-driving and autonomy, I think it's important that we have the LiDAR conversation. Of course, Elon Musk has made it very clear that he does not believe that LiDAR is necessary for a truly safe full self-driving vehicle. However, Mobileye would disagree and they believe that LiDAR is necessary for a truly safe system. Elon Musk has even said that LiDAR is a fool's errand and that anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Tesla's senior director of AI, Andre Karpathy, even said it, referring to LiDAR, gives a false sense of progress and is ultimately a crutch. Now, of course, Tesla doesn't use LiDAR, but they currently do use radar, a front-facing radar in their vehicles. However, according to this March 12th tweet from Elon Musk, with the next significant release of their full self-driving beta, they're going to be going with pure vision and not even using radar. Tesla is going to be really pushing the limits of a camera-based vision system, and Elon Musk appears very confident that they're going to be able to ship a system that is safe using camera vision alone. So while Tesla is going so far as saying that LiDAR and radar is not necessary, Mobileye, on the other hand, is approaching this problem from both sides. They believe it's important that you solve the camera-based 
vision system problem. And so what they're doing is they're actually coming up with somewhat of a hybrid model. They are separately developing a camera only subsystem while also developing a LiDAR radar only subsystem. And before they actually ship their final product, they're gonna combine these two subsystems together. According to them, this allows them to solve the really hard problem of a camera based vision system and all that goes into that, all the neural nets that go into that, it allows them to solve that problem and then add LiDAR and radar as a layer of redundancy for added safety. Now at first glance, this hybrid system and this added layer of safety that Mobileye is adding to their system sounds reasonable. However, I do believe there's a big fatal flaw that could be a big problem for Mobileye in the future with this approach. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, as we move into Mobileye's actual systems that they're shipping right now, I think it is important to realize that Mobileye is one of the big leaders when it comes to advanced driver assistance systems. And according to a recent presentation from them, in 2020, they shipped 19.3 million of their systems. Also impressively, Mobileye has developed what they call Supervision, which is their camera only ADAS system that has no radars necessary and this should actually be shipping to their first customers late this year. So Mobileye has gone a lot further than most people, and they believe that a camera-based vision system is sufficient for a level two ADAS system. However, they don't believe it's sufficient for a truly driverless vehicle. They don't believe that you can get to a safety level that is high enough with camera-based vision alone. Because of this, for their next generation full self-driving product, they're developing their own LiDAR system called Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave LiDAR. On top of developing their own LiDAR system, they also want to improve the radar systems in their vehicles and move to imaging radar sensors, which are a lot more precise and give them better data. So although this hybrid approach by Mobileye will put them ahead of most competitors who are relying too much on LiDAR and radar, I believe Mobileye has already limited themselves by saying that a camera-based vision system is not enough. I believe this is going to stop them from having a true breakthrough when it comes to a camera-based vision system, and they won't really push the limits of a system like this. After all, when you believe that something is impossible, to you, it really is impossible. Now, of course, there are many examples in science of things that we thought were impossible at one time that we now know are not impossible, but I think it's important that I step back for a minute and give an illustration just to show how limiting a belief is that something is impossible. Up until 1954, it was thought by many experts that it was impossible for a human to run a mile in less than four minutes. However, in May of 1954, an athlete by the name of Roger Bannister proved by running less than a four minute mile that it was possible. The interesting thing is, however, though, his world record of less than four minutes did not stand very long, and shortly after, several people beat that record, and currently today, it's somewhat common for a top athlete to be able to run a mile in less than four minutes. What was thought to be impossible at one time is now somewhat common. I believe this is something that will happen as well because once Tesla proves that you can ship a full self-driving system with only cameras, it'll prove to the world this is possible and then other companies will be able to figure this out as well. And it will prove once and for all that LiDAR and maybe even not even radar are necessary for full self-driving. So now I'd like to step back for just a minute and talk about why this matters. Why does it even matter if Tesla and Mobileye are able to ship a system with similar functionality, but Tesla uses cameras and Mobileye uses cameras, LiDAR and radar? What's the difference? Why does it even matter if they function the same in the end? Well, the big reason why this matters is because of the cost of these sensors. It's no secret that LiDAR is much more expensive than radar. And radar and LiDAR sensors are much more expensive than cameras alone. Cameras are very inexpensive. So let's say right now the year is 2023. Both Mobileye and Tesla have a system that works very similarly, has a great safety record, and they are both approved by regulators. Let's say GM is coming along and they want to buy a system from these two companies. They want to license a full self-driving system from one of these two companies. 
when it comes to choosing which system they want to use, do you think GM is going to want to implement a system that uses cameras only and is very inexpensive? Or do you think they're going to want to pay extra for their vehicles to put in LiDAR and radar sensors? Of course, a company is going to choose the cheaper, more simple option that is easier to implement. Yes, they may be able still to have robo taxis because the economics work different for that. But for the grand scale of actually shipping a consumer product and licensing this out to other brands like they do now, the current Mobileye business model, that will actually fall flat when competitors come with a more simple solution. Another really important piece of the full self-driving and autonomous vehicle conversation is all around data. The company with the most and best data is going to have a huge advantage in the race to full self-driving. Now, Mobileye does have a huge advantage over most other competitors besides Tesla when it comes to data. Mobileye currently has six major OEM partners that allow them to get some basic data from the sensors that are on their vehicles. And according to them, they're able to capture data from around 8 million kilometers of roads per day. However, when you dive into this data collection, it is a super low bandwidth of data that they're collecting, and it has nothing to do with event recording, but it has to do with them mapping the world. Now, Mobileye has made it very clear that they're not building HD maps. HD maps have a ton of detail that really isn't necessary for a full self-driving vehicle. They're building what they're calling autonomous vehicle maps or AV maps. As vehicles with their sensors move throughout their world, they're capturing data like drivable space, lane lines, curbs. They then use these maps as another layer for their autonomous vehicles and their ADAS systems. Now in the past, like this October tweet from 2020 from Elon Musk, he talked about how they don't use high resolution maps for their full self-driving program. He mentioned the fact that their system is capable of driving in locations they've never even seen once. Now, while Tesla does not use HD maps, as Elon Musk has made clear, I do believe they have some kind of basic framework map that is very similar to mobilized AV maps that give the basic drivable space, um, curbs, and some of the basic features of a road they're about to approach. And while they may not have to have this to drive, I believe they do have this for areas they've been before, as it does increase the accuracy of their system. So when it comes to the amount of data that is being collected between the two companies, Mobileye does have an advantage over many other companies, but of course, not Tesla. Tesla is able to gain a lot more data as they have a larger fleet, and they're able to gain more quality data because they're the one that actually manufactures the car, and they can get a lot higher bandwidth data out of their vehicles. On top of more and better data collection, Tesla is also able to run on their fleet what they call shadow mode, which is a background process that's not actually controlling the vehicle, but yet they can test certain predictions of their system in real world environments. I believe this is one of the most underappreciated aspects of Tesla's approach to solving the problem of full self-driving. So now that we've laid all that out, I believe it's now important that we answer the question, who will win? Who will likely get to full self-driving feature complete first? Well, in the recent Q4 2020 investor call, Elon Musk said, quote, with regard to full self-driving, I'm highly confident that the car will be able to drive itself with reliability in excess of humans this year. Notice that he didn't say regulators would approve it or that it would be many, many thousand times safer than a human driver. He just said that it would be safer than a human driver this year. And when you look at some of the examples of this full self-driving beta program from Tesla, like this example from James Locke, you can see just how impressive their current beta version is. Now, of course, Tesla's beta system isn't perfect and it does require driver intervention still. However, it does show what is necessary with their systems, not even using LiDAR. Also, Elon Musk seems really impressed with the next version coming, version 9.0. Elon Musk is so impressed with version 9 of the beta release that he believes sometime in May or maybe even June, they may be able to push out a wide release of this full self-driving beta. Now, it is, of course, important that we talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the fact that Elon Musk has promised that they would be feature complete for full self-driving 
for several years, and of course he's missed those targets. However, with all the progress that we're seeing right now with their full self-driving beta program, I believe that we really are getting close. And that while it may not be on the exact timeline that Elon Musk thinks, I do believe he will get there in the somewhat not too distant future. We'll learn a lot more about this in a possible AI day that could be held by Tesla in July of this year. Now, when it comes to mobilized projections and when they believe they'll have a completed system, in a recent presentation, they talked about how they want to reach consumer level autonomous vehicles sometime in 2025. When it comes to the robo taxi fleet, they hope to have an early riders program sometime this year and to have a commercial driverless pilot program in Israel in 2022. They also hope to launch this in other parts of the world as well in the coming years. Also, with a recent partnership they've had, they hope to have 35,000 autonomous delivery vehicles on the road by 2028, and they should start commercial operations with this partnership in 2023. So in conclusion, Mobileye is doing a lot of things right, and I do see them as a leader in autonomous vehicle tech. I do believe they can achieve full autonomy and with Intel as a parent company, they have resources that no other company has. However, I believe Tesla will solve what is impossible by many experts and have a full self-driving system that uses cameras only with a safety that is much greater than a human driver in the not too distant future. But really five to 10 years from now, it doesn't matter who got there first, but it matters who has a system that is the easiest to implement and the least expensive for an auto manufacturer to implement in their vehicle. That is the company that is going to succeed and I believe that company is going to be Tesla. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.